This demo is showing you the benefits of Valley Energy Management Systems applied to refineries, or in other words, how to help operators make better decisions. Who are we? Beltsim, we are a service and software company with about 30 years of experience, particularly in the oil and gas industry. We develop and market our in-house software, uh, Valley, which is based on uh, uh, data validation and reconciliation technology. We are based in, in Belgium, but we have a presence worldwide in uh, more than 100 installations uh, in Europe and Middle East and uh, North and South America. Our solutions and services are built on rigorous thermodynamic modeling of uh, processes using mass and energy balance concepts. Those are applied in various industry sectors, including upstream, downstream oil and gas, and power and utilities. Our customer base is covering various industry sectors uh, and uh, different regions all over the world. Uh, to name a few, we have been uh, involved in recent greenfield projects in the Middle East, such as Satorp and Yasref, and we have a long history in uh, global uh, oil and gas companies, such as Saudi Aramco, Total, and uh, BP, uh, and Sabic. To explain the benefits and uh, results obtained uh, through Valley, we have to explain very briefly the concept of data validation and reconciliation technology. This technology is based on a mathematical modeling of a process which involves a, a set of equations and uh, various state variables that represent the process. The equations can be, but are not limited to, mass balance constraints, energy balance constraints, compound balance constraints, reactions, equilibria, and so on. And those equations involve one or multiple variables, uh, for example, mass flows, molar flows, uh, temperatures, pressures, densities, and so on. So the system is, uh, is highly nonlinear and uh, is supposed to be in a steady state or pseudo steady state to satisfy the basic principles of the DVR technology. To illustrate the, the principles of this technology, let us consider this very small mass balance example where we have one inlet stream on the left and two outlet streams on the right. As we see, these measured mass flows of A33 do not match the outlets 21 and 10. So this, uh, these three measurements violate the mass balance constraint that one would uh, suppose for this system. The objective of data reconciliation is to correct these three measurements as little as possible so that they satisfy this uh, mass balance constraint. So in this uh, example, by assuming a certain uh, quality of this of the three sensors we would obtain three reconciled values of the mass flows using these technologies uh, you can uh, build different types of uh, business applications which have uh, different purposes for example production accounting to account for the for the production in a process plant like a refinery for example mass and energy balance performance monitoring uh, loss management and so on the example that I'm going to show now is located in this area, mass and energy balance um, and performance monitoring. The business case that I, I will show now is using results from uh, refinery, oil refinery in, in Europe, uh, medium to large size uh, refinery with a capacity of about of more than 300. Uh, 1,000 barrels per day. Uh, the, the refinery is in fact integrated in a larger uh, platform which is composed of the refinery itself and a petrochemical complex located just next to the refinery which is interconnected with, uh, which is interconnected with the refinery. Um, the, the scope of the, of, of the model that we have uh, developed is, is limited to the utility system, including a steam network, so which include in particular 
uh, two coil generation uh, units, a boiler, uh, several turbines, a power system, and what is particular here is that the refinery is connected to the electricity grid, which is which will be important later on. The customer had the following challenge. Uh, in order to reduce the energy costs, overall energy cost of the refinery, uh, he wanted to uh, to s define the actual operating conditions to highlight what is uh, what are the losses and to identify what are the inefficiencies uh, all over the utility system in order eventually to optimize the the energy costs. Uh, in order to do that, he had already in place uh, an optimization tool which was optimizing the the utility system, so the steam and, and power network. Um, and but he under, they understood very quickly that this uh, the quality of the uh, optimization results largely depend on the quality of the input data. So therefore, Valley has been chosen as the preferred tool to reconcile the utility network, so the, in particular the steam and the electricity uh, networks, to provide the optimization tool with reliable and robust data uh, on a continuous basis. The architecture that we have uh, set up together with the client and our partner company was to fetch data from uh, data historian system in order to reconcile those, to make them coherent and store the results in uh, our internal result database. Optionally, the third-party optimization tool can be launched and can be included in the workflow to produce suggestions how to improve the process operation. The optimized results, for example, the set points, whether or not to operate certain equipment, are then written back in the result database, which is part of the Valley package. Why has Valley been chosen as the reconciliation tool? Uh, utility systems typically do not have a very high level of instrumentations, uh, but at the same time, those uh, this data is uh, very crucial for the quality of uh, optimization tools or any, any other um, process analysis tool. Uh, Valley is the right tool for this because uh, it takes uh, redundancy from, from the process, reconciles data, uh, corrects them and uh, performs mass and energy uh, balancing by using thermodynamic models. This makes sure that the measurements are reliable and robust and accurate and provide coherent uh, snapshot of the current operating conditions. The, the scope of the demonstration that I'm, that I'm going to show you in the next couple of minutes is uh, a turbo generator which has been identified as running in a non-optimal uh, condition. Uh, which eventually led to economic savings. So the um, analysis was following the following scheme. So we were, uh, we were analyzing the performance of the, of the turbo generator and uh, checking in particular the efficiencies of this, uh, of this equipment. In the identification phase, we were identifying uh, problems with the quality of the measurements, which then uh, led to suggestions by the optimizer to not to use this particular equipment anymore. Uh, the customer took action and uh, followed this recommendation and actually shut down the, the the turbo generator, which then could be quantified by uh, with an economic benefit of about three hundred thousand dollars of savings uh, per year. So let me switch to the demonstration of the software in which we are going to show exactly what I would have just announced. So this is the this is the scope of or part of the, the the scope of the of the model that we that we have going that we are going to use for the for the analysis. So what we see in front of you is the steam network of the of the refinery which uh, includes in particular five uh, steam pressure levels, so high high pressure 65 bars, high pressure 35 bars, medium pressure 14 and 7 bars, and low pressure. Um, the um, utility system includes two cogen units which produce electricity and high pressure steam, uh, one boiler 
producing steam and three turbo generators producing electricity and consuming uh, high pressure steam this is uh, the system is not uh, an obvious system to to run and to optimize uh, which is why the customer has put in place an optimizer which is recommending uh, actions to minimize the fuel and uh, and overall um, energy costs of running the system while satisfying the utility demand from the process itself, from the refinery process units. So what uh, we are going to show in the next couple of minutes is how we are uh, we arrived at uh, identification of energy savings in the order of $300,000 uh, per year. First, let me illustrate a little bit the, the scope of the model uh, without going in, uh, in all details. What you see in front of you is one of the turbo generators that have been modeled and, uh, um, and are running uh, on an online basis on, on the customer side. So you have uh, high pressure steam coming from the cogen units and from the, uh, from the boiler. There's a possibility to bypass the GTAs, the two stage turbines, uh, bypass them here or to send this, uh, this steam through the, the turbines in order to produce electricity, which is then used inside the refinery or sent back to the electricity grid outside the refinery. Um, the, it's important to note that these, uh, these objects that you see here, in particular the turbines, are, are built in valley, valley equipment types, for example a turbine which includes parameters uh, such as uh, for example, efficiencies which are automatically calculated with each one. So the isentropic efficiency is a built-in KPI, which is part of uh, of, uh, of a valley model, which is always calculated based on the energy provided to this turbine in terms of uh, steam, the energy leaving in terms of power, mechanical power, or uh, um, a material stream with less energy content. So this uh, this subsystem is uh, modeled on a full thermodynamic basis where you make sure that all the energy provided to the system equals to the energy that is leaving the system either in form of electricity or in form of material stream or in form of uh, heat losses. All right, so let's analyze a little bit in further detail how uh, the customer managed to improve uh, the energy, energy cost of the refinery. What we see here in front of us is the condensate flow going through that uh, turbo generator. So let us illustrate this on, on the right. So we have the trend of the condensate flow going through this, uh, this turbine, which is in the order of uh, 5 to 10 tons per hour uh, measured flow rate. Uh, if we illustrate another information, uh, we, we have here the the power surplus, which is the overall power production of the refinery, which is not actually used on site. So this is the electricity being sent back to the um, electricity grid at a given selling price, which is in the order of 230, 240 megawatts. Um, let us now show next to the measured flow of the condensate, the reconciled flow. So what we see here in green is the reconciled flow of the same condensate, which is the value which is consistent with all the surrounding measurements, for example, the high pressure steam flow coming from the cogeneration units and the, and the boilers, with this, which is consistent with the electricity being produced, with the, with the medium pressure uh, steam leaving the uh, turbo generator. So this is, can be assumed to be uh, reasonably close to reality, and we observe a clear difference between those two. So there's a clear underestimation of the actual condensate flow rate by a uh, factor of three. What does this mean? It means, first of all, that there is clearly a problem with this sensor, so this uh, certainly will have to be calibrated or has to be replaced to, um, to give more reliable information. But more importantly, it means it has a strong impact on the calculation of the efficiency of this turbo generator, because the turbo generator efficiency is in particular based on the material flow going through that turbine. And if 
um, in this calculation we uh, we take a wrong uh, mass flow wrong by an order of different order of magnitude by a factor of divided by a factor of three this has a strong impact on the calculation of the efficiency so this information so, uh, has been taken into account for the optimizer and has been communicated to the plant operators which draw their conclusions by by deciding to shut down the um, this turbo generator so this we see here uh, around this date decision has been made to not to use any more this turbo generator so the mass flow being sent through this uh, through this equipment is being put to zero so there's nothing used anymore we also see this here in the used view where we see that the all the flows are being uh, are not being used anymore uh, we we also see this uh, another interesting observation here when looking again at the uh, the power surplus so the electricity that, that is being sent back to the grid and sold to the uh, electricity providers which is dropping by about 20 percent so before we had a uh, power surplus of uh, the order of 235 which is dropping to 180 190 megawatt so about 20 percent drop of uh, of uh, excess power being produced on site and sent back to the electricity grid. So what does this mean? So we, if we take a step back and uh, t digest this, uh, these observations, what have we seen? We've seen that uh, observing the fact that uh, there's a strong difference between the measured and reconciled condensate flow, the, um, the optimizer has suggested not to use any more the turbo generator. And this suggestion has been implemented uh, on site, which we see here. So the, the mass flow, the condensate mass flow being sent through the turbo generator is being dropped to zero. So there's no um, use anymore of this turbo generator. Moreover, after some, some delay also, we see a clear drop in the power surplus, which is the, being, the electricity being sent back to the electricity grid. So, uh, and this drop in, in, in electricity export back to the grid has been evaluated by the customer at a given price. Uh, so, to understand this, uh, we have to uh, realize the fact that the refinery is connected to the public electricity grid, so there's a long-term um, selling and buying uh, prices fixed between the refinery and the uh, electricity uh, grid um, operators uh, and this impact that uh, the financial impact of this uh, reduced electricity production on site has been evaluated financially by the refinery operators uh, in the order of three hundred thousand dollars per year so let us conclude now what we have seen in this last couple of minutes Valley energy management systems uh, allow you to continuously track your uh, key process variables and KPIs. Uh, it also allows you to calculate and, uh, and display utility balance, for example, steam balance, electricity balance, and so on. Uh, and more importantly, it is um, a crucial tool for uh, decision support systems, in particular uh, utility optimization tools, which will be running more robust and more, uh, more reliably uh, when basing their recommendations on reconciled process data. In this particular case, we have managed to link the optimizer to the Valley online suite, uh, which allows to run all the optimization on, uh, on an hourly basis. In the business case that we have uh, highlighted, we have uh, shown how we managed to identify and quantify the energy savings in the order of $300,000 per year by um, basing business decisions on uh, reliable reconciled process data instead of uh, raw measurements. If you want to learn more about our solutions and services, please visit our website www.belsim.com.